All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast. BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you this week from Montreal. At least once a week on this channel, I'm hoping to have a little question and answer session where I read off your comments and we can have a little bit of a discussion about some of the questions and comments that you guys have been leaving. Today we're discussing Jean Benet Ramsey. This has been a case that I've covered not super frequently, but I've been putting up a several uploads. I believe I have five or six up right now, getting into some theories about the death of Jean Benet Ramsey back in 1996. Now, our first comment comes to us from Carla Barbosa. Carla writes Very brave of you to do a podcast on this case. I stay away from anything to do with children. This one in particular is so disturbing. I'm a mother, so I can't deal with children being hurt. Although I know, I know about the case, and my personal opinion is that Burke was the killer, and the parents covered up for him. Children are supposed to be innocent, but they can do horrible things. Well, Carla, thank you for the comment. I made an entire upload on the Burke Ramsey murder theory, mostly because I found that just reading other comments on YouTube that I find that the majority of YouTube users who are commenting on the case really lean toward Burke Ramsey as being the perpetrator, and I think that um, there are a few reasons for this. A lot of the things come into question. Burke also has some very um, nervous behavior that I think people are kind of zoning in on, you know, the Dr. Phil interview, but also the interrogations that were going on back at the time, they're just sort of like he's exhibiting, you know, some type, some bizarre behavior, and it's made people suspicious. On a personal level, I don't necessarily believe the Burke Ramsey murder theories. I believe Jean Benet was murdered by an intruder, and we can talk a little bit more about that in a second. But the other big thing to say is, because of researching these things for Black Box Radio, I found that, um, I found that... I learned some new things about the Burke Ramsey theories that I hadn't known before. The CBS presentation on Burke Ramsey as a suspect really showed that it is possible for a kid age 9 or 10 to deliver a fatal blow with one strike that would cause an 8.5 inch crack in a 6 year old skull. I thought it was impossible. Not only me, but also John and Patsy Ramsey wrote that in the book, The Death of Innocence. They were like, it's no possible way a 9 or 10 year old boy could have done that. However, you know, they really did, you know, um, you know, they did sort of a, I guess you call it a forensic test to see if it was possible during the CBS program that suggested Burke Ramsey was the murderer. And, you know, it is physically possible. And I would say that combined with Burke's suspicious behavior, I'm not surprised at all that other people are really looking toward Burke Ramsey as as a suspect. But once again, I said that I support the um, intruder theories, and those are kind of the things that um, we can talk about in just a second. But today is not only about me. Let's look at some of the comments from other users here. Now, going on to another upload that I did about the Patsy Ramsey murder theory. We have one that comes to us from Max Alberts. And Max has three things that he would like to say. My thoughts, writes Max. Patsy Ramsey took command of the situation after finding that her husband had raped and perhaps, accidentally, perhaps not, murdered their only daughter. Number two, some of the occult, this was some sort of occult ritual that had taken place in the Ramsey's basement. Best guess, Patsy tried to regain, maintain her youthful beauty and her only daughter and became, her only daughter became a sacrifice to that obsession. Most likely there was another man present or any number of other men or part of a secret coven. Well, let's just talk about this one here for a second. First, thank you, Max, for the comment. There's a big thing we need to discuss with this. Uh, Was there any sort of occult ritual involved? You know, I do a segment on BBOR called Occult Mondays. I have no problem discussing the occult. Um, We talk all about, you know, evil and spirits and magic and mysticism. I have no problem discussing that. 
I'm not necessarily seeing any definitive physical evidence that would go toward an occult ritual taking place, so I can't comment any further on that. But the biggest thing that is kind of buried in here in Max's statement is a third man was present. I mean, this would be, he's talking about a third man, meaning Patsy Ramsey is one person, John Ramsey, and there was probably a third man there. That's going to become very, very key because we have DNA evidence, and we also have a boot print that was matched to a particular individual, and people don't think those are connected. But Max continues, number three, John Ramsey was a bluebeard type pervert, a daughter killer. Well, um, if I recall, Bluebeard uh, strangled all of his wives, and then, you know, he um, hid them and away in a locked room. Would uh, John Ramsey have done that? Well, once again, I don't necessarily think there's enough physical evidence to support that, but yeah, I can't really comment too much on that. I think it's very good, though, to zone in on the possibility that you believe that there was uh, more than just one person involved with this, because I think the physical evidence really leans toward that, that the, the evidence really leans toward there was more than one person involved in this particular case. There could have actually even been, you know, three people, four people. On a personal note, I do think that there was at least three people in the house because after doing my most recent upload on the um, intruder theory, which was called John Bonet Exonerating the Ramses. We talked about a book that was uh, written called Little Girl Blue. And what this sort of tries to say is that the ransom note was most likely written by a woman. And other people have talked about this. They think that a woman wrote the ransom note. We have a boot print at the scene matched to an individual named Michael Helgoth. And uh, I recommend everybody watch Aphrodite Jones to, to hear a very big discussion on that boot print. She's the biggest person I found that covered the case like that. And then we also have the DNA found on John Bonet's leggings and DNA found on her underwear that not only do not come from John Ramsey, it's not from anyone in the Ramsey family. So that means not Burke. I believe though with the boot print, Dr. Phil, it was either Dr. Phil or someone uh, similar stated that the boot print was Burke's size. But as in, on Aphrodite Jones, they said something completely to the contrary. They said that it was a grown man's boot print. You can see the um, letters in it, H-I-T-E-C. And in Little Girl Blue, they discussed that, you know, Jean Benet vomited during the ordeal. And that uh, the killer, or, or um, accessory to the crime, stepped in her vomit. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of the details in the boot print were preserved. So that added something to the uh, discussion. Our next comment comes to us from Maya Gerard. She says, this is really interesting. Thank you for posting. Oh, well, thank you, Maya. Very nice to hear from you. And let's move on to another one here, because let's move on to that latest this upload that I mentioned, Jean Benet exoner exonerating the Ramses. And we have another comment coming to us here from Max Alberts once again. Max writes, The only way to reasonably believe, note my use of adverb, the late Miss Ramsey was beset by an intruder, or three, is to believe that the Ramseys were set up either by the killer, who kept a distance and hired thugs to do the dirty job, or by whoever broke into the Ramsey house, and was aware of the family's location and how long and how long they would probably be gone. Well, yeah, absolutely. I think that is an enormous point that is going towards someone who has been accused of being kind of the ringleader in this intruder theory. And her name is Linda Hoffman Pugh. She was someone who worked with the Ramses. And according to the book, Little Girl Blue, she has, you know, a um, key to the house. or so, Well, she had one in 1996 anyway. And once again, you know, it's like, I think that people are very divided in the intruder theory. They think that either they entered through the window in the basement, or they might have just gone through the doors with their own key if they did have one. Further, writes Max Alberts, 
further. The intruder theory assumes that the killer was familiar enough with the Ramses to be aware of that the security alarm had, for once, been turned off that day. That implies thorough knowledge and intensive premeditation. It wasn't just some wandering psycho who happened upon John and Patsy Ramsey's family, and only the, their family. It had to be someone with intimate knowledge of the, fa of the family, and the $118,000 ransom wasn't just pulled out of the clouds of nowhere. It was John's annual Christmas bonus. These details, piled atop one another, are more than coincidental. Motive can only be guessed at and motive guessed at will will make a sane person sick. Well, Max, thank you for that. Um, you know, I think the points that Max has just laid out are excellent examples that actually support an intruder theory versus the Burke Ramsey theory. Because, you know, if we're going to look at someone like Linda Hoffman Pugh, Michael Helgoth, and possibly Mervyn Hoffman Pugh, Linda's husband, who has never been, you know, implicated in this, but... I'm even hesitant to say their names out loud, the Hoffman Pews, but at the same time, other people have brought this to, the, to their attention in documentaries and in books. It's like, they did have knowledge of the Ramsey's house. They did have knowledge, they would have had knowledge about the security systems. They also had a financial dispute going on with the Ramseys. How do you get to Michael Helgoth? Well, his family owned a junkyard on the outskirts of Boulder, and he had some sort of property dispute with John Ramsey, which I'm not too familiar with. But you would have had people who had beef with them, so to speak. You would have had people who had um, kind of a reason to seek revenge against the Ramseys. And I do believe that um, the killing of Jean Benet was something that was very, very premeditated. I believe that it was, you know, something somewhat vengeful. I can definitely see all of those pieces falling into place. Once again, with the Burke Ramsey theory, how do you get the garrote? What What is that there for? You know, it's like, because that isn't just a staged item. The garrote is something that, you know, was actually used to take her life. Not the head wound, but the garrote that, as far as I know, John Bonet died from strangulation. So it's like, I just don't see how that fits into any narrative associated with the Burke Ramsey theory. You know, I mean, Burke didn't tie that knot. You know, that's a very complicated thing, and it's just like... Furthermore, I mean, I think that their people are focusing on a lot of sensational aspects of the case, and they're trying to um, pin this on the family members when... Once again, I do insist that it was an intruder, and I think the points that Max Albert has put out here support that. You would have people who had disputes with the Ramses. You would have had people who wanted to get back at them. People with keys to the house who could have entered, knowing that the alarms wouldn't have been triggered. And you might have, you know, as we talked about in the last Jean Benet upload, you would have two people associated with the killing of Jean Benet, Michael Helgoth, possibly Mervyn Hoffman Pugh, or another man. And then you would have Linda Hoffman Pugh writing the ransom note. That's why it explains the feminine character in Linda Hoffman Pugh's handwriting, or, well, in the person who wrote the ransom note's handwriting. Gotta, can't, you know, reveal everything too quickly. So it's pretty much that's that. I think those are very large supporting examples. Another thing that goes against the Burke Ramsey theory and the Patsy Ramsey murder theory is that we had, um, um, the head of the paintbrush was broken off, and I believe the killer took the paintbrush head with him, you know, that actually had the bristles in it, and some people were suggesting that, um, the paintbrush was actually used to sexually assault Jean Benet, and that was actually put inside her, and it was taken with the killer because it's not found anywhere in the house. Once again, that goes definitely against the Burke Ramsey murder theory because it would still be there if they were just covering up for their for their son. I mean, what are they going to break the head off the paintbrush, tie this garrote, strangle their own daughter to death, and then what, flush it down the toilet or something? I mean, that's kind of bizarre. Not to mention sexual molestation. But Max has one last thing here when he says, Please keep doing your videos. You have a great voice and generate many questions. Thank you very much. 
Max, thank you for the compliment. Um, however, when you say great voice, uh, I was listening to some of my older uploads on BBOR back from early 2017, and you can hear me talking like a robot. B-B-O-R, Black Box Online Radio. Yeah, like, um... <laughs> so all I can say is this is a work in progress and far from perfect. Um, just trying to get on with a little bit every day. But, you know, let's talk about another thing that has come up in some of these cases. Because we have a new comment here that is coming to us from Conan Enigma. Conan writes, one sentence, John Andrew Ramsey was there. John Andrew Ramsey was, of course, uh, John Ramsey's son. John Ramsey is John Bennett Ramsey, and that's how they formed the name Jean Benet out of John Bennett. Well, he's talking about John Andrew Ramsey as a suspect. Once again, uh, this is really focusing in on the family, and I think this is actually kind of a tipping point where we can pivot into the next part of the conversation, which is Linda Arndt, the detective, of course, on the scene, the famous Linda Arndt interview. Linda Arndt is all about, you know... Um, a particular suspect that she believes murdered John Bonet, but she wouldn't say in the interview, and the comments section was going wild saying that she's talking about John Ramsey. John Bennett Ramsey, that is. Talking about John Bonet's father. She and you know, at that time they were still saying that John Bonet's uh, sexual abuse was something that was recurring, that there were signs of sexual abuse that had gone on over a long period of time. But as far as I know, and we talked about this in the last upload. That's not true. That she was only sexually assaulted one time. There's touch DNA on her that doesn't come from anyone in the Ramsey family. John Bennett Ramsey, John Andrew Ramsey, Burke Ramsey. There is DNA on her leggings and on her underwear that did not come from anyone in the Ramsey family. There's a boot print there that, you know, has been matched to someone's boot who has now committed suicide two months after the Ramsey killing. Michael Helgoth commits suicide, and they find the same boot in his home, and they match that to the boot print found at the scene very clearly with letters H-I-T-E-C, high-tech, written into it. So we also have the dispute with Michael Helgoth, the dispute with Linda Hoffman Pugh. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark, as they would say. Now, how do we get to the Ramses? Well, I just, I mean, this is almost kind of like I'm seeing a mountain of evidence in favor of an intruder theory. And I'll even ask this flat out. How does any theory associated with the Ramses lead to the DNA found on John Bonet's leggings and on her underwear? I'm not seeing it. More importantly, another thing that was noted in the book Little Girl Blue was that John Bonet's bed was not wet that night. So that gets rid of the Patsy Ramsey theory that um, Patsy Ramsey got mad about bedwetting. There was no urine found in the sheets that John Bonet had been sleeping in. I mean, once again, if that is correct, and you know, there are some primary sources provided in that book, but at the same time, it's like, I'm just not seeing this mountain of evidence that is in favor of anyone in the Ramsey family. What I am seeing here is at least three people have entered into the Ramsey home without triggering any alarms. One of the giant things about the intruder theory is, it, yes, it does require premeditation, but it doesn't require an enormous amount of intelligence to just stalk the house and just look and wait for them to leave. Also, someone like Linda Hoffman Pugh would have known that they were going to a Christmas party and they would be gone for multiple hours. But even if she had her own key, or they knew about the window in the basement, they would be able to enter in there in minutes. I mean, Lou Smith has proven that. I do believe, though, that they did exit via the basement. There's an open window with a suitcase placed right below it. They stepped on top of the suitcase to walk out of the basement, up the window... Well, through the window and up the little chute, and there's that kind of gap area by the um, 
Ramsey's basement window, which isn't very far off the ground, and the Core TV documentary showed that very clearly. It's not really like, you know, my basement has a window that is, um, oh, at least five feet off the ground. This isn't something like that. It's much lower, so it's very, very easy to enter in there. And then those two or three people disappeared into the night. One of the big ways that we could get some answers would be DNA test for Mervyn Hoffman Pugh, more handwriting samples from Linda Hoffman Pugh, and uh, looking at the uh, personal life of Michael Helgoth to get some more answers. But I really have to insist, this. I think Max Alberts has a good point when he's like, premeditation is at its absolute height. I got that. But to say that, you know, um, other things, this doesn't require an enormous amount of calculation. It's just like someone's watching the house and they're waiting for them to leave and then the intruders get in. That's what it seems like to me. Well, what do you have to say? Who do you think murdered John Binet? After everything I put forward in favor of an intruder theory, what do you think? Do you have anything to say about um, the Ramses? What do you think their role in this is? I would also just like to say on one concluding note about the Burke Ramsey theory, it's just like, after investigating it, a lot of my initial assumptions were wrong, and I did learn some new things. I learned that it is possible for a 9 or 10 year old boy to cause that type of damage to a 6 year old skull. I also learned that um, Burke's behavior is kind of abnormal, and you know, John described him as a private person, that sometimes is a red flag with these cases. Not always. I mean, I could be described as a private person, but other people would describe me that way. I don't describe myself that way. So you see what I mean? That's a matter of perspective. But let's talk about this case a little more. If you have anything to say at all, drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Let's keep discussing things, and maybe we'll connect some dots and try to solve what happened. That's all for me now. Until next time.